My name is Dr. Jim Craig, and I practice at Summerbrook Dental Group. A dentist is accused of poisoning his wife and mother of their six children. We talk about this tragic and bizarre story with Daily Mail's chief investigative reporter, Laura Collins. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. All right, let's go over to Aurora, Colorado, where 45-year-old dentist James Craig has been arrested and charged with the first-degree murder of his 43-year-old wife, Angela Craig. So back in March, she actually visited the hospital two times, complaining of feeling dizzy and faint. But then on March 15th, Angela was admitted to a hospital again, where she suffered a seizure, was put on life support, and she died three days later. Now, the coroner has indicated that she was poisoned, poisoned with cyanide and also something called tetrahydrozoline. Angela leaving behind six children that she had with James. So why do authorities believe that James killed his wife? Well, they say that he plotted her murder, and they claim that they found online searches for such things as how to make murder look like a heart attack, how many grams of pure arsenic will kill a human, is arsenic detectable in autopsy? They also claim that he purchased cyanide and had it delivered to his office days before Angela died, and that James made Angela a protein shake before her first hospitalization, where she became unwell after the workout. And they say that he did all of this to receive millions in life insurance payouts and because he was allegedly having an affair. I want to bring in right now Laura Collins, chief investigative reporter at the Daily Mail, who has been following this case closely. Laura, thanks so much for taking the time to come here on Sidebar. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What do we know? What do we know about James Craig? And what do we know about his relationship with Angela? Well, I think what we know now is that um, the facade that James Craig had sort of put out there, you know, this respectable married man, successful dentist running his own practice, father of six children, and Angela, his wife, put out very positive family pictures on their social media, on her Facebook. I think what we know is that regardless of, of where this trial goes, all of that was a facade that just simply wasn't true behind the scenes james was absolutely up to his eyes in debt um his dental practice was hemorrhaging about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a month um he had over two million in personal debt he was having an affair um the police have said that was the motivation for him wanting to end his wife's life and that he wanted to start a new life with his mistress his mistress has since come out and said that's news to her um, and that she didn't actually know that he was married and that had she known that um, it, it would have been a no-go. So who knows where the truth lies in that one. But but I think we know that um, the version of James Craig that he put out there, this devout man, this family man, this successful man, simply wasn't the case. And did it lead him to murder his wife? I mean, that's the big question. My understanding is you actually spoke with people that worked with James and also the family of Angela as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, the people who worked with James had this um, really very positive view of him. Although I have to say it doesn't quite chime, how positive they were to some extent doesn't quite chime with the fact that they clearly had suspicions because it was actually employees in his own dental practice that kind of raised the alarm um, as far as the arrival of um, controlled substances and cyanide at his practice was concerned. So there were clearly some concerns. So, you know, they, they were quite circumspect when they spoke to me, but I, well, I isn't it isn't it more that they were shocked? It, it was their shock, like the guy that they knew maybe. was not who they know yeah. now. Yeah, maybe, and and certainly Angela's brother Mark, who's a a, a really nice, incredibly dignified, gracious man, um, is clearly feels deeply betrayed. Um, you know, and but again, I think also has suspicions because you know I I did speak with him after um, we broke the story about the the extent of James's debts. And they essentially said that was kind of what they suspected. They had a feeling that all was not well. They, you know, and certainly Angela spoke to her sister. I mean, the probable cause um, shows texts exchanged between the sisters um, where Angela essentially revealed that James had tried to poison her before, about five years ago. Um, and I, I think many people would struggle to understand how you stay with a partner who has tried to poison you, whatever reason they give you. Um, he said that he didn't want her to disturb his own suicide attempt. So he, he yeah, drugged her. He could kill himself. Let's amplify I mean, that a little bit. So, so, so he, a few years ago, she said 
tried to poison her, drug her. He said he was doing it to kill himself and drugged her yeah. because he didn't want her to stop him. But then doesn't that tie into what happened now? Because I believe there was an exchange, bet- a text between James and Angela, I think on March 6th, right, where she's talking about not feeling well. And he you know, basically addresses the elephant in the room about him allegedly <laughs> drugging her in the past, right? Yeah. He says he understands that it may be, quote, triggering for her, um, which is an unusual way of putting things in general. I mean, you wouldn't think that a wife would be triggered into thinking her husband had poisoned her, but of course he had before. So, but he, but he very much insists, I know you may be triggered. I essentially, I know I did this before, but I haven't drugged you this time, which in itself is, is kind of an extraordinary admission. Um, and of course the police are saying is also nonsense that he did indeed poison her. Um, and I know yeah, that the, 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 so, so the, the text exchange was, I feel drugged. And he responds, given our history, I know that must be triggering just for the record. I didn't drug you. I am super worried, though. You really looked pale before I left, like in your lips even. Yeah. I mean, I think there's something very sinister, certainly, you know, I know this is all alleged, but um, it, there's a, a sort of a sinister, sinister aspect as far as the prosecution are alleging that, you know, he's expressing great concern for Angela's welfare. He's expressing great concern that she's not well. He's talking about maybe coming home and is she OK and should she go to the hospital? And if indeed he was behind all this, the, the extent of this facade is is quite remarkable. Um, you know, and, and he's the one who was making her protein shakes and, you know, the it's still a little bit unclear as to quite what the mechanism was of, of if he poisoned her, how that poison was sort of given to her. Um, Cause there's some question mark over eye drops at the moment as well, that what she was actually, what was actually found in her system, which I'm not going to try and pronounce, you pronounced it earlier, um, was actually in over the counter eye drops. So there's a little bit, you know, it, it's not in cl- entirely clear what happened, but yeah, he, he drugged her in the past. And he's also claimed this time around that he was ordering the drugs for himself, possibly to commit suicide again. So he's come up with this suicide story again. Um, Angela's brother pointed out that he's never seen anyone try to kind of create a faux story to, to conceal a suicide bid. It's, it's, it's all just a little bit odd. Yeah, and I think I also read that one of the rationales that he was ordering these drugs to the dental offices for research. I think I saw that as well. <laughs> That's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah, try to maybe not alarm suspicion. Again, he's innocent until proven guilty, but it is That's alarming it. to hear about this. Do you, one of the questions I have is if she visited the hospital multiple times before that final admission, did you see anything in your, your investigation about why the hospital released her? Did they not see any traces of poison? I think, I mean, my understanding is they simply didn't test for that. They were perplexed and they didn't quite understand what was going on. But I suppose it, it wasn't a go-to diagnosis for them. I mean, she presented with these various symptoms. She seemed to be okay. She seemed to be sort of getting better and she was, she headed home. And certainly the last time when she came in, they just uh, apparently, I mean, again, according to the probable cause, they just could not figure out why her, um, why, why her system was failing. So catastrophically, they couldn't understand what was going on until it was actually James's best friend, um, an old, um, friend from dental school, um, a business partner who actually flagged up, there had been this delivery of poison to the dental practice and it had been the employee who'd opened it, who alerted him to that. So then they were like, okay, so now we get what's going on. And by then, obviously it was just too late. I had mentioned some of the, uh, searches that he was conducting online. They believe in anticipation of doing this. Uh, you mentioned the affair. Uh, I also said that there was, um, the reporting indicates that there was a financial motive for him, uh, the life insurance payouts based on the probable cause affidavit and what we've learned in the preliminary hearing and any of the research you've done. How do we know that finances were a potential motive for him? Well, we certainly know he was in a great deal of debt. I mean, we we uncovered quite a lot of that in terms of he'd filed for bankruptcy. In fact, his own personal bankruptcy was completed in 2020. He was on the cusp of a second bankruptcy. Um, he'd invested pretty poorly and dismally in cryptocurrency, which ended up being essentially worthless. And he had poured hundreds of thousands of dollars into what was essentially a crypto Ponzi scheme. He was actually embroiled in a a different legal suit, a federal suit in relation to that. He was named as one of the victims. Um, He, I'm not quite sure how he was managing to, to lose money at the rate that he was, but he had 
almost $800,000 worth of salary each year, but he was still about $2 million worth in debt. He'd remortgaged the house a couple of times. Basically, all of the things that he appeared to have were mortgaged up to the hilt. So mm. he, he was in a pretty dire financial situation for sure. I mean, his friend Ryan Redfern, who was his business partner, described him as a risk taker. He also seems to have had a gambling problem. He lost thousands in Vegas. You know, he, he was... and conducting an affair there were sort of um, expenses in his business expenses which were a little bit eyebrow raising like i think it was something like sixty thousand dollars worth in entertaining and travel i'm not quite he, sure he met, how, her at a, he, he, he met this he met this woman at a convention right that's right yes um she's an orthodontist based in texas but i'm mm -hmm. not quite sure how this um local dentist justifies 60 grand's worth of entertaining in his taxes yeah. so that there's some some eyebrow raising things so let me ask you this. Um, so he hasn't entered a plea. Um, I think he's awaiting arraignment on August 29th. Based on That's the right, statements yeah. from his defense attorneys, have you gotten a sampling of what, where they might be going, what they might be questioning in the prosecution's case, what their potential defense may be? I think... What jumps out to me so far is that they seem to be essentially saying this is completely circumstantial. You've got absolutely nothing that puts a bottle of poison in his hand, dropping it into her protein shakes or whatever, that there's nothing that has actually linked up the purchases of the poison to Angela's ill health, other than the timeline, i.e. it was a matter of days from the arrival of certain poison to her being in hospital. So I, I think I mean, I suspect they're going to be fighting this pretty, um, pretty strongly. And I mean, obviously, they, they tried to claim that there wasn't enough evidence to bring the case. I don't think anyone is very surprised that a judge said, yes, there is enough. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I don't think he's going to be, I mean, I could be wrong, obviously, but I don't think he's going to be taking any sort of plea. I think he's going to be fighting this and they're going to be saying you don't actually have any hard evidence. It's all circumstantial. Yeah, and in terms of the preliminary hearing, it's a low bar to have this case go forward. They just believe, the judges yeah. believe there's enough forward to proceed to trial. Uh, Laura Collins, yeah. chief investigative re reporter at the Daily Mail, terrific analysis of this. Um, I encourage everyone to check out your reporting on this story. And real quick, let everybody know where they can find you. Um, DailyMail.com. No social media? Oh, me? Yeah, at Collins Inc. I'm on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> I want to okay. really forget that sort of thing. But yeah, it's, it's the mail online, Daily Mail. I was I was actually impressed. I was like, oh my goodness, the one person who's not on social media, genius, genius, so smartest cool. person of all. Um, Laura, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right, everybody, that's all we have for you right now here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time.